Hello and welcome. It's time for another colourful edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA. Let's dive straight in and take a closer look at some of the latest tips, tricks and techniques coming up on today's programme. Versatile artist Louise Bogard shows us how a flatmate can be the best companion any artist could have. Warren Sealer returns to demonstrate how to paint a juicy still life in today's spectacular Try Your Hand Out project. Our resident splashy paint bookworm Henry Malt will be delving into the SAA Art Library to recommend another inspirational read. And Keith Pennick will be sharing some of his simple tips and techniques to help break down all the individual elements needed to paint your own watercolour masterpiece. But before all that, let's kick things off with a little demonstration on drawing techniques. I quite often paint flowers in the garden, but the drawing of them can be a different thing completely. There's a bit of a sort of structure or a bit of a script you can work to when it comes to drawing flowers and petals and leaves. Just to give you a bit of a guidance, a basic petal will start off with a bit of a line of symmetry. And then it's just a case of matching the two sides of the petal using the central line. Now that same basic rule would also apply if you're doing something like a leaf as well, because leaves quite often have the nice central line. Start from the point and then work your way to the tip of the leaf and it always works that way. So to put this in practice, if I just draw a very simple basic flower, I'll just put the sort of central piece where all the stamens are and then bring a few lines coming out of this These are the central lines, the lines of symmetry. And then we can connect the actual petals. It looks a bit like a spider at that point. Always make it wider at the top and then make it pointy at the top there and just match the two sides. And it really makes painting flowers so much easier, as you can see by this. Lots of flowers have the standard kind of petals. Obviously, if you're doing something like a rose, it's a totally different thing whatsoever, but for lots of standard flowers, it's pretty similar. Use the central line as a point to draw them in. And of course, the short ones at the back as well. If you put the stem coming down from this, from the center, work from the center, start off with a line and then just make it wider. As far as the leaves are concerned, if there was some leaves coming off this, for example, do the same thing. Put the lines on to start with. You quite often get a leaf that's bent over as well. These can look really effective in a picture. If I do that just to one side to show you this. It's a similar idea, but put a bit of a drop on it, a bit of a kink on it. And then we go up to the top on that one, and then go down the opposite side. And you can see how it's given that crease. The same basic idea. Put the direction, put the line coming up, and then go underneath. And it works really well in any picture like this. Even if you're doing something like a foxglove, it would have a similar system to start with. You would use a bit of a line of symmetry to start with. And right at the top of that line of symmetry is a bit of a, a green area where it attaches itself to the flower. At the bottom end is a bit of an opening where the bees go in. Still working to the central rule and then work it through and you can see the foxglove there. So hopefully you can see how useful that central line is for sketching leaves and petals. So there you have it folks, a nice little exercise for you to try. Why not show us how you get on by uploading examples of your work to the community section on the SAA website. Simply visit saa.co.uk for details. Right folks, time to cross over to that side of the studio and join versatile artist Louise Bogard, who's going to show us one of the best companions any artist could have. Today I'm going to show you how I would use an SAA's flatmate. I've got a, a beach scene that I've started and I want to now do a little bit of extra work using the flatmate into some of the rocks. I've got a dark paint or pigment mixed up which is French ultramarine and burnt umber and because this has got such a gorgeous flat edge you can really get some shapes into your rocks very very effectively. Now I've painted these with yellow oak and what I want to do is use the side of that brush, the end and the side, to create chunky big rocks right up to the edge. Leave a little bit of the white area to give a different, you know, shade difference between the rocks before and after them. Get some in there, really dark. 
I'm going to clean the brush and pick up a little bit of just some blue. French ultramarine. Pop that in there as well. Using that gorgeous brush, those nice marks. Very angular. It's easy to create curvy rocks when you're using a round brush. This is the best way to get nice chunky rocks. I'm also going to do some lines in the sea. You can get some very interesting straight marks. Uh, if I show you on the tape, just some very easy straight marks. Because it's got this gorgeous flat edge, you don't have to try too hard. So the ripples in the water, I've saved some white areas, but I want to accentuate those, so I'm going to pop some little marks underneath using the flat brush, dot it around here and there. So you're accentuating the ripples and the fact that the sea is coming in. Let's clean that out. Pick up a tiny, tiny touch of purple and go in with that as well. Helps to show those waves really coming in. Blend that out a little bit. You can see how easy it is to use this brush. Very, very effective. Pulling that colour down, moving it around. I think we'll just have one or two more of those coming into the shoreline. Dot it around. Blend them out. With some clean water. Very effective. Another nice way of using this brush, because it's got such a flat edge, is you can actually flick really effectively with it. And I'm an absolute fan of flicking. So let's pick up the tiniest little bit of dark. Gonna get rather dirty now. The, the uh, beach area is really very plain, so let's just flick. Tiny little bits, almost imperceivable, but they, you can actually get like sand effects with just the tiniest little bit of flicking. It's no good if you've got nice polished nails, but very effective. You move the brush around as you're going. I'll pick up some of the yellow ochre that I've got on the beach already, so keep it nice and warm. So that we've got a mixture of dark marks and lighter marks. So creating a nice textured beach area. I'm going to put some of that yellow ochre into those rocks as well. Again, because it's, it, this brush is almost like you're drawing with it because it's such a lovely straight edge. You've got a lot of control with it. A little bit more flicking because I just love it. And that's how I would use one of these gorgeous little SAA flatmates. Do make sure you treat yourself to one. They're great. See you soon. Thanks Louise, it really is a great brush, essential to have in your collection. And remember, for full details and great savings on any of the materials featured in today's programme, visit saa.co.uk. Well folks, time for a quick break now, but join us when we return with today's Try Your Hand Up project with SAA professional artist Warren Seeley, who will be demonstrating how to use oils to paint a stunning still life. See you very soon. <laughs>